activities um, you can find her on the web at moosefarm.com. Um, Billy Davis, the gentleman here, has um, been referred to as the doctor of ecology. Um, he founded and runs the Sustainable Beat um, Project in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is actually a not-for-profit, so if you're thinking about making any terrible contributions, keep their program in mind. Um, and they've done much to advance the both the science and the practice of uh, making nukes and integrating them into your uh, beekeeping activities, whether you have a handful of hives or hundreds of hives. And Wendy and Billy will both talk about um, the advantages of doing that. So since we're running a little bit late, why don't we go ahead and get started? I think Wendy's going to go first. Okay. Um. <laughs> How many of you have been keeping bees for five years or more? Raise your hands. Oh, I can. I like <laughs> Okay. Not too many. How about for um, three years or more? Okay. A few more. One? One year. One year, okay. So, so we've we've got a group of like kind of mostly middle little little a couple of years experience for the most part, and uh, a few old timers. Um, okay, it just helps to kind of know. And if I'm blocking anybody over here, just give a yell. Okay, I kind of have to stay close to this to advance the slides. Um, Nucleus colonies. I'm going to give you guys an overview of nukes. And then Billy is going to go into the details of how he sets up and manages his nukes in his um, clean rearing project, you know, down in, in Virginia. And it's, it's really kind of a unique way of doing it. Mine is a little more um, basic. You know, I haven't progressed quite as far as Billy has, but, this, but, it, but it also highlights um, the differences in climate, because everything you do with your beekeeping is very specific to where you are. Your nectar flows, your climate, you know, when things happen, where you actually are with your bees. So those differences are critical. Um, which is why, you know, when Chris told me about this, I thought it would be valuable to get, like, um, the, the two different viewpoints. So why would you want to raise nucleus colonies? Like everybody's talking about nukes now. So why do it? Um, obviously, you you know you buy nukes right in order to increase your colony numbers. So if you can raise them instead of buying them, it'll save you money. We all like to save money. We know that. Um, if you have a great queen who made you five supers of honey and is like you've never been stung by any of her bees even in the middle of the dearth in summer um, and you'd really like and she, and she has hardly any mites and you know you'd really like to keep that genetics in your operation um, you can use nucleus colonies to preserve and propagate those good genetics so it's a way of making our beekeeping efforts more sustainable by continuing lines that are good. Um, to replace winter dead outs early. So if you've got overwintered nukes and you found that, you know, say you've got six colonies and three of them died over the winter, if you've got three or four nukes in reserve and you wintered them and three survived, you can replace your nuke dead outs in March. Okay, rather than waiting for April, May, June, even July. Um, and as a management aid, you know, most beekeepers that I know who have been doing it for a while have a certain number of nucleus colonies in reserve because you're going to find that they're very useful. Um, you have a queen issue, you need to be clean quickly. They can help. Oh dear, what did I do? With the escape key. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and for swarm control. We can use nukes if we pull bees out of a huge colony that's about to swarm, we may be able to reduce the swarming impulse. So that's another way. Um, 
And as I say, yeah, most serious beekeepers keep one nuke for every two to three production colonies. That's a lot of nukes. When do you make up your nukes? The timing of when you make your nukes is critical. And the timing of it is a function of why you want those nukes. There's a lot of different reasons. If you want to replace winter losses or build up your colony numbers, you make up your nukes in late spring to early summer so that they can overwinter and you'll use them the following spring. If you want them for swarm control, you're going to pull bees from your production colonies for those nukes about a month before the major nectar flow. Okay, so that we're talking about April for swarm control. And for colony buildup, late spring, early summer in our area is when? June. Okay? For queen production or storage of replacement queens during the major nectar flows, May and June. And maybe a little bit into July. So now I'm talking specifically for us here in Morris County. I'm a little bit north of you guys because I'm in northern Morris County in the Montville Boone Township area. Okay, but it, I think we're close enough that that applies to you guys too. Um, what goes into a nuke? And, and I'm talking about five frame nukes here. It depends on what the nuke is for. So you will have typically at least two frames of cat and emerging brood with young nurse bees attached. Now how do you know if the brood is emerging or not? You, you scrape away the capping and you see if you've got a nearly mature pupa in there that's about to come out. Or if you've got a frame that's got a ring of capped brood around an open space, maybe that the queen is starting to relay with eggs, that ring is coming out and what's in the middle has already emerged. Eggs and very young milk brood with nurse bees. You need one of these frames if you're asking this new to, be, to raise a queen. And you need that from your very best colony. If you're not asking the nuke to raise a queen, that's actually a draw on the resources of the nuke. So you would want to not include it. Okay, you only put that milk brood in, that really young brood, if you're going to raise a queen. Food. I like to always include a frame of natural food, preferably open nectar, uncapped honey or nectar, and some pollen, nice pollen in there, just one frame. And uh, I, I use division board feeders, and I keep them in the bottom part of the bottom um, box. You know, I like this type with the rigid sides, because the when they're really close to the brood nest, the bees just go poof, and they get the food, and poof, they come out, and they don't have to travel way up high. And you know, when it's cold, that can be important. Um, all right. Is that so, box a medium? Pardon? Is that the box? It's not a These boxes are mediums, and if you look over, you'll see some are Billy's boxes. My whole operation is mediums, but you can do this with deeps too. <coughs> It's just, you know, you would just change the size of the box, that's all. But you can do it, you know, and you can use mediums very successfully. I have no problems with mediums. They work very well. Um, okay. There's really two different kinds of nukes. Nukes that are going to raise their own queen, which is a little dicey, but you can do it. And nukes that you are going to give either a queen cell or a caged mated queen to. Okay, so let's talk about the latter kind first. You set up your nuke with the feeder on one side, your two frames of capped and emerging brood, you're going to put that queen cell or the caged queen in between those two frames of capped brood. You've got this frame of open drawn comb, what's that for? I think she said it, laying eggs, right? When that queen comes out, she's got to have a place to lay. So if you, you know, if you give them cells that are all full of stuff, where is she going to lay? Okay, so she needs a, a frame of, not foundation, please. She can't lay in foundation. I mean, if you have no choice, give them foundation. They'll draw it out as fast as they can. But she really wants 
someplace to lay. And that, that food frame, the uncapped honey and nectar with pollen in it. So that's how you set up for either a mated queen or a queen cell. All right. If you're going to raise a queen in this nuke, you've got your feeder, the captain emerging brood, two frames, and then instead of that frame of just empty drawn comb, you've got a frame of eggs and very, very young larvae, what we call milk brood, and they should be floating in a sea of royal jelly. Okay, barely, not even bigger than the egg. That's the age, the ideal age is 24 hours. Um, and, uh, and make sure that it's, you know, don't pick this from, from the colony that, you know, they're out there to greet you in your truck 50 feet away from your bee yard. No, that's not the one you want. You know, you want the one that gave you a good five supers of honey and is really nice and gentle. The one I was talking about before. That's the one we want. Okay, so throw a pollen patty on that nuke and relocate it to another apiary at least a couple of miles distant. Now, this is where you guys can help each other. You can call each other up and say, you know, I just made up some nukes and I need a place to take them. Can I borrow your bee yard for a couple of days? That's all you need. Take them away for a short period of time and then you can bring them back. What happens if you don't take them away? They go back to the hive. Thank you. Yes, they just go right back home. You know, and all your efforts were for nothing, especially if there's no queen in there. They're going to go home. Okay. You really need the good nutrition when you are trying to raise a queen. We're, we're, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay. So, yes. Put those newly pulled nukes on your truck and drive away and set them up somewhere else so that the bees do not know where they are. Very important. I think it's can. Okay. A nuke that is raising a queen. Okay. When when we raise queens commercially, we. How long do they have to be in the other bee? Or? A few days. Okay. You know, you you'll see. Actually, you'll see that the foragers have oriented to that hive. They're no longer flying around looking all confused. You know, scratching their little heads with their little antennae. They're they're they decided that's home now. And once that's happened, you can take them back because they've forgotten the old location. It's usually just a few days. Um, okay. When we raise queens commercially, we make up colonies that are much larger than like normal colonies. Three deeps, full of bees, young bees, brood, and food. You know, you want a super duper colony to raise or to 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 finish a good queen cell. So. If you're trying to raise a queen with a nuke, there are drawbacks. You know, you're, you're dealing with a little colony, so it's not the ideal situation. Um, but you can do it. The, the most important thing to remember is that in order to raise really good queens, you need a lot of very young, very well-fed nurse bees. So you're going to have to shake extra nurse bees in from frames of open brood where nurse bees are feeding open brood. You want to shake those into your new. You also need exceptional nutrition because those nurse bees have got to eat pollen to make brood food, to make royal jelly, to feed the cells. So if they don't have enough coming in and it's a nuke and they've got a lot of nurse bees and not a lot of foragers, you have to supply it. All right, so if you have a nuke that's raising a queen, you're going to have to make up for the innate deficiencies of this little tiny hive that you have put these bees in by giving them a lot of food. Shake in several frames of young bees and make sure they never run out of sugar syrup and you give them a good pollen substitute and make sure they never run out of that too. Okay? It's not a bad idea to give them a second box that is just honey and pollen, frames of pollen and open nectar and honey as insurance. And if you're going to do it in a nuke, this is really good advice. Do it during peak nectar flows. Don't try and do it in August. You know, you'll have much better success raising 
a queen in a nucleus colony if you do it when there's natural food coming in. Okay, so when do you check this nuke? If you've introduced a caged queen, all you need is three to five days for them to let her out and see if she's laid. If it's a queen cell, a mature queen cell is going to emerge within a day, to give her two weeks to mate, okay, and then check and make sure you've got eggs. If she hasn't made it in two weeks, she's probably a duck. If they're raising their own queen, after three weeks, you'll definitely have a virgin in there, okay, because they're going to start with, they're going to start with a larva that's one to two days old, typically. And she's been an egg for three days. Okay, so you've got four to five days, and it takes how many days to make a queen? 16. 21 for a worker. Okay. 16 for a queen, 24 for a drone. So if you've got 16 less four or five, we're talking 11 or 12 days, okay, for the virgin to emerge after you've given them this cell. Um, no, after not cell, you've given them the frame. So after three weeks, she, come, well, she comes out, okay, and then it takes her one to two weeks to mate. So three to four weeks, you should have a mated queen in there. Because you look so confused. Did I say something confusing? No. Okay. Just a lot of numbers. All right. So now what do you do? Now you've got a nuke, you've got a queen, you know, she's laying eggs, she's producing more bees in this box. So you can use that nuke to replace a bad queen, a queen that's become a drone layer or just like isn't all that great, you don't like her, um, and fix a hive that's queenless, okay? But not if they have laying workers. If they have laying workers, you have to do it a little bit differently. Um, but you could put, you put the whole nuke into the queenless hive, frame by frame, and you don't even have to cage the queen. Yes? If you have a bad queen, you have to go in and take that queen out, I'm assuming. And, and how, how many days before you introduce the new nuke? One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll actually know, most of the bees in that hive will know that they're queenless within an hour. Some studies even say 20 minutes. <laughs> but a day, one to two days is, is safe. Okay. If you've got a good nectar flow, you don't even have to put the queen in a cage. If it's in a dirt, that's good precaution to cage her and make sure, make sure that they, you know, they like her. Now what? Okay, what else can you do with the nukes? You can use them in swarm management. So if you make up nukes from your really strong colonies before swarming season, like early in April, Okay, you can, you can knock down the population to the point where they won't swarm. So if you're, raised, if you're working with carniolans, okay, this is a nice ploy. If you're working with carniolans in Newark, although why you would do such a thing, I don't know. <laughs> or Russians, even worse, right? <laughs> they just want to swarm. You, you, you blink at them and they want to swarm. Okay, so then you're going to use nukes for swarm control. Okay, what else can you do? You can use that nuke as a bee production factory. If you want honey production rather than swarm control, here's this nuke with, with a queen who's pumping out eggs, pumping out more bees, okay? You can take frames of bees and cap root and put them in a colony that maybe wouldn't have made honey for you, okay? Pump them up, and now you've got, you know, one of these nice monster hives that's going to give you, uh, you know, four or five. I had one. I had one. I swear to God, okay, I'm in a church. I can't lie. That gave me, I think, seven supers of honey this year. I put it in black locust and harvested four supers of black locust, and then I moved it to a linden yard and got another three, three supers of linden. Now what? You can use queenless nukes as mating nuclei in your own queen rearing operation. Okay, everybody wants to do this eventually. Every beekeeper will want to do this. Um, wait a few years, you know, get a few years of experience under your belt, but this is a lot of fun. Um, you know, that's me with my glasses trying to craft. <laughs> Actually, I really like crafting. It's, it's kind of fun. 
you graph from your very best colonies and you will raise queens that are perfectly suited to your area that have, will overwinter for you. You know, and the more you do that, the better suited your queens are. You can keep that nuke with its young, vigorous queen, okay, give them a second story and overwinter them, and then next year you're going to use them to replace your own losses in your own operation or build up your numbers. Okay, so you see, nukes are an incredibly flexible tool that you can use for multiple purposes. Swarm control, you know, dead out replacement, uh, building colony numbers, management, replacing bad queens. Really flexible, wonderful um, things you can do with nukes. So wintering nukes. This is and I, this is how I winter nukes that I'm going to show you. Okay, it is not like the ultimate answer to wintering nukes. It's just one beekeeper's way of doing it that works in my area, and I'm sure that you know the 50 beekeepers in this room will come up with 50 different ways of accomplishing the same thing. And Billy's going to show you his, his ways, which I think are very ingenious. Um, okay. You've got to get them ready for winter starting in August, really. And you're going to build them up, okay? If they don't have enough honey, you, in August or in June and July, they're one-story news. So as early as you can, preferably still in June, you add a second story. It can be foundation, they've got enough time to draw it out if you, if you add it early enough, or drawn home that they're going to fill with honey. Okay, you've got to feed them if it's, if it's during the dearth and they don't have this full of honey. Um, but you want, if possible, to keep them in a separate yard, and I'll talk about that later. Um, going into the fall, you want six to eight medium frames covered in bees, plus lots of good stores in a two-story nuke with this upper, this upper box full of honey, capped honey. Okay, so in summer, that's what our nukes look like. Um, I put them on pallets to get them up off the ground. Billy will show you he's got a different way of keeping that airspace under the nukes, but both of us do the same thing. We don't want the nukes on the ground. They don't do well there. Um, and I wrap them. I don't, do you wrap your nukes? No. He's far enough south, he doesn't really need to. Um, whoops, what did I do? Okay. Okay. These nukes, you buff them up together, or I do anyway, with the entrances facing in opposite directions. So if you envision two of these guys together, you've kind of got the equivalent of something a little bit bigger than a deep, right? And the bees, the bees are so smart, they cluster around that shared wall. I mean, it's actually a double thickness of wood in the middle there, but it's warmer here than it is out here. And when you open these guys up in early spring, you'll see all the bees are like here. You know, it's like a half cluster here and a half cluster here. So they double the warmth. And, and this works really well. I mean, I've had, not last year, but I've had years where I was able to bring through 90% of my nukes using this method. Now, you can see they have to be butted right up against each other. So you can't use a telescoping out of cover. It's got to be a migratory lid that doesn't stick out. Otherwise, you can't get them close together. You see that, right? Um, so you get them butted up, and then this is my own little idea. I, you know, we we do a lot of internet orders, so I have these big rolls of bubble wrap, and I think to myself, hey, you know, I could like put some bubble wrap and get like an airspace in between the nuke and the wrapping, the tar paper, and that will help insulate it some more. So I, you know, I never tried doing it without the bubble wrap. That I should probably try that just for the sake of experimenting. But I do know that it works. So after I wrap everything up with bubble wrap, just using a staple gun. In fact, if you look at my nukes, you'll see all the staples that I still haven't pulled out of them. Um, I use 15-pound tar paper, okay, to wrap the whole thing up just like a Christmas package. Um, this is what I use as an inner cover. 
All right, it's just, it's actually a piece of painter's tarp, which is impregnated with plastic on one side, so it kind of holds together pretty well. You know, it's got a hole. And I cut a notch here because my nukes all have an upper exit, really, um, so that they can get out up here in case this is buried in snow. And on top of that, I put one of these guys. This is a built right moisture board. If you go on like um, the University of Minnesota's website for beekeepers, you'll see how they wrap uh, bees up in the far northern states, like Minnesota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. And they use these moisture boards to absorb metabolic moisture. In New Jersey, what we do is we just kind of prop up the outer cover or the inner cover to let metabolic moisture escape. That's the way we're taught, and it's pretty successful for us. And most of us don't wrap our full-size production colonies. It's not that cold here. But, you know, what's not that cold for a production colony is cold for a nuke. So I decided to try these, and in fact, in early spring, these are really wet. So I know they work. You know, they do absorb metabolic moisture, and they do work. Okay. Um, and there's your upper entrance. You see where, just for the, the perspective is, you see there's the, the bottom board and the mouse guard at the bottom board. They absolutely have to have a mouse guard. Um, and I just cut that notch. There, here's the notch. It's in the front. Okay, and I just cut a notch right there in that tar paper so that the bees can come and go. Um, and then I'll prop that up with a little stick because this has to be exposed to the air in order for that moisture to vent. And the bees come up here and they go out the side. So that works pretty well. All right, problems that you can have with nukes. Um, yes, you've just given a colony, you've just stuck this colony of bees into a little tiny box with a vigorous young queen, so what do you think is going to happen? Right. You've got to watch them, okay, because they will swarm on you, particularly if it's a very vigorous, good queen. You know, sometimes we have, you've got to have extra extra boxes, or pull the frames. Uh, robbing, I have found, is a major, major problem with nukes in this part of the world, when we get into a dirt. Last year, we had a terrible dirt, really bad. And I was feeding bees. I had all of these nukes here in the same yard as these production colonies. And they were getting robbed like I just could not stop the robbing. Um, and just a regular entrance reducer wouldn't work, wasn't working. And I devised this um, I devised this little robber guard, you know, which I thought was such a grand idea. Um, the concept of this is, okay, of course, the entrance is down here, and the aroma of that sugar syrup and honey is coming out here. So the robbers come and they want to get in here where the, where the aroma is. Now the bees that live inside are oriented to this exit up here. So they know that that's how you get in and out, but the robbers don't. Okay, so theoretically that sounds great. And I've seen designs, I mean, this ought to work, right? Well, what actually happens is that some robbers figure it out, and there's fighting that goes on, okay? And then what happens is this entrance gets blocked by dead bees. They can't carry the dead bees up and out. They get overwhelmed with dead bees, and the entrance is blocked, and they die. And it happens, you know, like that. And I'm, like, not out there every day checking. It took me a while to figure out what was happening, but I kept, kept finding dead nukes. Um, Varroa mites. Okay. If you pull your nukes, and when I say pull nukes, I mean you're pulling bees and brood from a colony that has just been treated for Varroa mites, you're probably okay and you probably don't need to treat again. But if it's a really bad year, Okay, and you're pulling from colonies that were not just treated, 
you need to treat for mites. I lost most of my nukes last year to mites because last year was a banner year for mites. Okay, I don't know how many of you guys have varroa losses, and I treat, you know, I treat every summer and I treat on time. But last year was such a great year for mites. It's like those chipmunk years, you know, where your cat is bringing in chipmunks, like every day there's a chipmunk in the house that you gotta catch and release. And then, you know, the next year there's no chipmunks. Well, last year was a great year for the mites, right? Not such a great year for the bees. So, this is what we're doing for, I treated everybody for mites in spring with formic acid. Okay, not the nukes, but the full-size colonies. Then pulled the nukes. And this year I'm going to treat the nukes and I'm going to use Apigard. Why Apigard? Why not mitolite quick strips? Because the nukes are too small. The nukes are too small. And you cannot cut the mite away quick strips. Okay. If you cut them, you are changing the release rate of the formic acid, and you're actually giving them an overdose. You think you're decreasing it, but you're not. You're making the dose of formic acid higher for a shorter a short period of time. And it's enough to kill to kill the bees. So but you can use Apigard, which is Thymol, and use a quarter or a half dose with the shim, okay? And that will work for nukes. I have done that before, and it doesn't kill them, and they're okay. If it's a big boomer of a nuke, I'll use a half dose. If it's kind of weak, I'll use a quarter dose. But you've got to at least consider Varroa. Did you buy the um, the Epigard in the buckets and scoop it out yourself? Yeah. So if you're buying them in the trays, you would just scoop out half of it? Yeah. Yeah, and you can, you can put it on a little piece of cardboard. Right. You know, and that'll work fine. Preferably with uh, um, something impervious. Yeah. Small high beetle. Um, you know, Small hive beetles are a problem with weak colonies. <laughs> What's a nuke? It's a weak colony, by definition. So um, I have not had any major problems with these. When I started raising queens, I was using what they call mini nukes or baby nukes, and that's too small. <laughs> okay, small hive beetle will take that over. But in our area, a five frame nuke is big enough to take care of small high beetle. So it hasn't been an issue. But if they get weak, you, you kind of have to watch out. Thermoregulation, that's another thing. This is a concern primarily with nukes that are um, used as mating nukes for queen cells. Queen cells are very, very vulnerable to overheating. So if you're raising queens in summer, you, that's why these guys are in the shade. Okay, you don't typically put bees in the shade, right? You know, you take the bee class and, and we tell you to put them in full sun. Um, or at least, you know, with entrances facing south. Mating nuclei have to be under some kind of cover because they will overheat. Um, yeah, and sometimes bees will like decide, oh, you know, I don't like this queen cell and they'll just go away. So you have to sort of watch the strength of nukes. If you've got a bunch of them in one yard, you may have to shake extra bees in. Or, you know, you'll, you'll look at this one, and there's like, where are all the bees? And then you'll go to the one next door, and, and you pop in, there's like millions of bees. They all liked this queen cell better. So if you're going to give that one a chance, you've got to go put some more bees back. Or you might decide, well, they know best, and just abandon it. Um, yeah, new problems tend to be self-correcting. That's kind of that's sort of true with beekeeping in general, isn't it? The problems tend to be self-correcting. You make a mistake, the bees are the best teachers on the face of the planet. Their lessons are immediate, often painful, and you know, either you learn from the lessons or you stop keeping bees eventually. But they're great teachers. Uh, if you didn't put enough bees in the nuke, or if you didn't make it up with the right components, or if it's got a lousy queen, it won't make it to the winter. 
Um, so any nuke that makes it to spring is generally a pretty good nuke. Uh, yes, a word of caution. <laughs> Billy, do you remember our Russian friend Jane from Rhode Island? You know, this is like a really great, wonderful, young, brand new beekeeper, very enthusiastic, and she was so excited about all the talk of nukes at EAS a couple of years ago that she did, what she did was she had these like three beautiful full-size production colonies, big ones, and she broke them all down into nukes before the winter. And I'm like, Jane, why did you do that? And she says, oh, oh, I went to winter nukes. And she's Russian. She says it like, I can't, I, you could probably do it, <laughs> but I can't imitate her accent. But, you know, nukes are more vulnerable than big hives. <laughs> So think before you, you know, before you go and take all of your bees and make nukes out of them, think about what you're trying to accomplish with this, okay? Um, and every frame of bees that you take from a production colony weakens that colony, all right? Makes it that much less honey that that colony is going to produce. So, um, you know, you have to find the right balance in your operation between nucleus colonies and production colonies. Um, I actually have like two phases of my operation. My northern yards are devoted to queen rearing and nukes because they're not great honey production areas. My southern yards in Pinebrook are devoted to honey production. I don't pull bees from those yards for nukes because I don't want to weaken those bees. I need those bees to make my honey crop. Um, Okay, yes. And that's all I've got. And and Mirabile Dig too. there's plenty of time. We're actually running on time now. Yes, questions. Um, if, how, do you, if you, how do you know when it's time to take your nuke and put it into a bigger colony or put it into a, a set of new colony, a new hive? You, you wait until they're like bubbling over or in the risk of them swarming? Anytime you're new, okay. The answer to that question really is a function of what you want to do with that nuke. If you want to keep it as a nuke and winter it as a nuke, then you're going to have to pull frames out of it and give it um, empty frames, okay? If you want, if, if it's early spring and this is an overwintered nuke, and you want it to make some money for you, you're going to put it in full-size equipment and let it build up. You know, so it, it all depends on what you want to do with it. You can actually keep the nuke going as long as you want. You can keep it going indefinitely, out. yes. Just by pulling the brood out. Right. You just have to keep it from swarming. <laughs> More questions? <coughs> yes. Um, with the robin and the little device that you created. The robin screen, yeah. Is, did you ever evolve the something else or that was just your one experiment? Yeah, my, no, my, my solution to that problem is to take the nukes to their own yard and bulk feed them. Everybody heard about bulk feeding just or barrel open, feeding? Open barrel. An open barrel with straw in it. Actually, I use five gallon buckets because I can't like handle barrels, but five gallon bucket with a good bit of straw in it, some sticks sticking out so bees can crawl out. Um, the cover just like pop down on one side but with a stick holding it open so there's an entrance. And bees will come and if you put that like 300 feet away from your bees, they'll just come and rob it out. And it's, it's a nice, easy, it's a really easy way of feeding. You know, really easy way of feeding. And a good way to build them up. Yeah, you're feeding the whole neighborhood. That's true. So, you know, if you have a lot of neighbors in the neighborhood, you might not want to do that. I don't. Why don't yeah. we? Why don't we let? Well, you can answer more questions, but then we'll let Billy go, and then we can do questions for both of you at the end. Great idea. You have the last question. I was just going to say, if your nuke swarms, is it like a regular hive to cover, or do you have to do something? I didn't hear you. If the nuke swarms, swarms, will it recover like a regular hive, or do you have to do something about it? Uh, well, if the nuke swarms, it was probably a pretty strong nuke. 
you know, but you've got to make that judgment call based on the strength of the nuke after it's formed. 